What's up guys, welcome to Adam Off-Road. In today's video, we're gonna be installing the four inch Skyjacker suspension lift. So in this video, you're gonna get an idea of how we remove and install all four bump stops, coil springs, lower control arms, and shocks for the suspension lift. Also, we're gonna talk about all four sway bar end links and a drop down transfer case lowering kit. We're gonna be installing a rear track bar mount and also the extended pitman arm that comes with this kit. Anyone can do this. It's not going to be that hard. It's not too difficult to do. There are going to be a lot of safety things we're going to discuss throughout the install um, as far as being safe, you know, using jacks, using jack stands, and, um, and uh, just being careful with the energy stored when compressing springs and things like that during the uh, duration of this video. So I hope you enjoy the video and you're going to hear me continue talking throughout the whole process. So let's begin. Okay guys, to start the installation, we're gonna block both the rear tires. So we're gonna start the installation by installing the lift on the front end. I'm gonna take my jack and jack up the front end and set the frame on stands. I wanna make sure that the frame is secured to the ground and the ground is level. Next, I wanna take my impact wrench and buzz off all 10 lug nuts on the front wheels. Remove the wheels and set those aside. So next, we gotta remove the track bar from the axle end. I'm gonna take a T50 Torx bit and connect it to a breaker bar, break that bolt loose, finish it off with my impact and remove that bolt. Here I'm gonna remove the cotter pin and the castellated nut that's connecting the drag link to the pitman arm. I'm gonna go ahead and take this fork using my hammer. We're gonna strike that fork on the back side of that fork to separate the ball joint from the original pitman arm and remove the nut and lower the drag link. So with the drag link separated, I'm going to take a T55 Torx bit and a 19 millimeter wrench and remove the axle side of the sway bar end links from the axle. Once the sway bar end links are disconnected, we'll go ahead and remove both of the shocks on both sides, passenger and driver's side. I have a video link here I'll post on how to uh, remove and install new shocks. Go ahead and check out that video. So next I'm going to take a 5 8 wrench and my ball joint separator and I'm going to strike the end and remove the end link from the sway bar. At this point in the removal process, it's going to be important to keep a jack secured underneath the front differential. To remove the springs from the axle side, you'll have to take a 13 millimeter wrench and remove the retainer bolt and retainers. Once those two bolts were removed from the springs on the axle side, I was able to lower the jack and remove the springs. So just keep in mind that a lot of the steering components are factory from the Jeep. They've never been replaced. So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of those components. So I want to begin to remove the ball joint at the end of the drag link. I'm going to take a ruler and measure the distance from the clamp to the end of the joint. When we go to put the new one in, we'll know exactly where to put it. Um, I'm going to loosen up the clamp with a 15 millimeter wrench. Once loose, I'm going to turn this ball joint clockwise until it's totally removed from the drag link. I'm going to change this out anyways, so this was my go-to tool. Now, if I want to remove this and not damage this rubber around the joint, I would take this tool. You can rent this from AutoZone, um, fairly cheap. It's the 27308 ball joint separator. Looks like this. You'll need a 15 16 wrench for the main bolt. So here I'm going to remove the cotter pin with some dikes and a hammer. Take my 19 millimeter wrench and remove that castellated nut. Okay, so you're gonna set it up just like this. You'll push it into the joint, but then take my wrench and tighten. And I just strike the top with my little hammer. And it, as you can see, the joint came out just like that. Pretty simple. Here, I'm gonna take a 32 millimeter socket and buzz off the pitman arm nut. It's a pretty large nut. And don't forget, there's going to be a lock washer there. After that, I'm going to take some paint. Nail polish works perfect. And I'm just going to mark the location of the factory OEM pitman arm. Okay, so this is the pitman arm puller we're going to use today. You can order or rent one for our, uh, for this removal tool. It is a 27170. Um, this is what we're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to take it off. 
So to remove the pitman arm, I'm going to begin to back out all the hardware on the puller. And I'm going to set the puller jaws over the top side of that pitman arm. And I'm going to start snugging up all the bolts. The two horizontal bolts with the wing nuts, you want to make sure those are considerably tight. You don't want those to back off or loose because it'll prevent those jaws from opening up as um, we start to run that main bolt in through the puller to pull off of the, the pitman arm off of the spline shaft of the steering box. So once the puller's all aligned and ready to go, I'm going to take a 22 millimeter socket and buzz that pitman arm off with the puller. Okay, so once you get it pretty much separated with the impact, you want to just uh, stop with the impact and go ahead and finish it with a wrench. Because it's already broken free, it's pretty much loose, it's coming off. Um, you want to use a wrench. You don't want to keep using the impact because this will happen and it'll start twisting. If you have a cordless impact, it will stop on the dime. But a 120 volt impact like mine, this thing's going to come off and start twisting. You just want to be careful. You know, things can happen where stuff can hit you in the face. Be careful. Oh uh, yeah, track bar and bump stops just rolled in. So we're just about done with the front end. As far as removing everything we're going to replace, I'm going to take some channel locks and remove both of those bump stops out of the bump stop cups. And then I'm going to take a 15 millimeter socket and remove both of those cups and the bolt. So in the hijacker installation kit for the lift, um, they require you to add these spacers so you can reuse these bump stops. So the idea is to unbolt the cup the bump stop cup that this was in add the spacer right and then this would be in here just don't want to use the old stuff i figure since i'm going to do it do it right get the extension bump stops and i won't have to use that kit or the original bump stops and uh, i like this setup a little bit better um, you will have to use an extension and put that drop that bolt down the center comes out like this so i'm just going to take my socket and extension and thread it in just like so i put some soap around the edges just so it kind of slip kind of helps it get in there that's the only way to do it guys is just set it on the floor and push it in use your body weight and you can see these indentations they uh seat in this groove and i tried to do it from from in the vehicle and it just wouldn't work perfect so as you can see, I've already started to paint things along the way as we start installing these new components. So I'm going to take some anti-seize and spread it along the splines of the shaft and some blue Loctite on the threads. Line up the pitman arm with the original marks, add the lock washer and nut, and I'm going to torque this nut to 175 foot-pounds. So since I'm already here, I'm going to thread in the new ball joint to the drag link counterclockwise, and we'll come back to this later. So I don't really invest much money into these type of tools because I don't use them very often. But when I do, I rent my tools from AutoZone. Now, the first set I got, they gave to me and I look at them and the thrust washer, one of them didn't even have a thrust washer here. The other one did. Now, they gave it to me dry no lubricant or anything the thrust washer there is steel so once the thrust washer is damaged then the hex shoulder of the bolt the head starts grinding into this material here and um, you're gonna have a hell of a time getting these um, off and on your springs when compressing your springs um, they just start binding up they get hot um, here's a tip take some wd-40 and spray the threads and then take some of this grease, I don't care if it's KY jelly, and put it around here where the thrust washer rubs against this block here, this adjusting block. Take some grease and load it up with grease and everything will be a lot more easier when you go to install those coil springs and you're using these tools. And these tools will last a lot longer if you take care of them. So with that, we're going to go ahead and install these spring compressors. Just keep in mind that when you go ahead and tighten these down and you compress that spring, there's going to be a lot of energy stored in this spring. So here I'm going to use my impact and I'm just going to compress them as far in as I can. Just get them compressed as much as you can. The, the more you compress them, the better off you are as installation. 
The only downside of that is that when you go to remove and uncompress these by hand with a wrench, it's all gonna be done by hand. So it's a slow but surely operation. I noticed that moving my jack around up and down a little bit, it kind of helped the insulation of the springs. I've already got the driver's side in. We're going to walk you through on the passenger side in. So like I said, compress them as much as you can. And those extended bump spots were kind of getting in the way. It was kind of a pain. I had to fight them a little bit, put my arm up in there and kind of moved them because they were hanging up on the coils of the spring. But as soon as I worked past that, I was able to compress the spring just enough more and I took a pry bar so the bottom end of the spring would slide right into the spring perch. And a little kick got the job done. And uh, I was able to grab a hold of the spring compressors and just center that into the spring perch itself. Oh yeah. Now I'm just trying to get the springs in the damn coil perch. Then it was a long drawn out process, just removing the spring compressors by hand with a 19 millimeter wrench. And once that was done, everything started looking really good. So once the springs are installed, don't forget, we're gonna torque that spring retainer bolt with a 13 millimeter socket at 16 foot pounds. So at this point, you can see that the Skyjacker 700 series shocks are installed. At this point, you wanna install your shocks. They're looking really good. I decided I was gonna keep the boots on until we have issues with them. I just cut them off later. Also notice on the face of the dual rate springs, there's a label, the Skyjacker DR label. You want to make sure that label is facing the outside. So now going back to the drag link, we're going to connect the drag link ball joint to the extended pitman arm that Skyjacker provides in the kit. I'm going to take a 19 millimeter wrench and uh, tighten that down and torque it to 60 foot pounds. Add my cotter pin and then I'm going to prep to pump some grease into that joint. And I'm just using the NGL2 red grease. You can buy this pretty cheap at AutoZone. So the drag link clamp, you want to torque that to 36 foot pounds. So just keep in mind that I replaced the old ball joint with the new ball joint and that it's in the same exact position. And the final adjustments here should be done at a professional alignment shop. Okay guys, so at this point you want to install your sway bar end links. And what you're going to do is you're going to bolt up this bracket. You want to make sure the nut and the washer is on the outside because you'll rub on the frame. You wanna make sure that your sway bar end link is outboard, but inboard of the axle frame mount. So this is the passenger side. What I went ahead and did was uh, use the factory bolt. If I had to disconnect this link um, on this side, I would have to have 55 T Torx bit and a 19 millimeter wrench. But on this side of the sway bar end link, like I said, the bolt is on this side so you have clearance on the frame so you're not rubbing but on this side i have a quick disconnect i just went ahead and installed a quick pin to disconnect the sway bar end links when i want to go off-road so the front of the suspension and steering is pretty much all buttoned up i'm going to go ahead and put the wheels back on and torque the lug nuts down to 95 foot pounds lower the jeep and remove my floor jack Okay guys, so like I said earlier in the video, we're not going to be doing some of the steps in this video. Um, right now, at this point, you want to be looking at installing your, your track bar. So based on the decisions that you make on the track bar, or if you're going to use the OEM, or if you're going to upgrade a, into another track bar like I did, um, if you're interested on to see how I installed this Steindragger track bar for this lift, um, go ahead and check out the video link below, or this one right here up at the top. So once the track bar is installed, we're going to locate and get ready to install both the lower control arms for the front. I'm going to go ahead and take some of this paint and polish and I'm going to mark the eccentric cams and I'm going to do that on both sides for each bolt. This is going to be a pretty important step that once we remove these bolts and replace the lower control arms that they go back in the same position. Starting with the passenger side, we'll begin to remove the bolt with a 22 millimeter socket and a crescent wrench on the axle side lower control arm. I'm going to go ahead and remove that bolt and then I'll remove the bolt over on the frame side and we'll lower that control arm and then get the new one in. So all four of the control arms are going to be the same. So you just want to make sure that their labels are on the outside facing the outside of the Jeep. And I'm going to go ahead and install the first bolt on the frame side and then I'm going to bring the lower control arm up to the axle. And here I used a rubber mallet. It was pretty helpful to tap the lower control arm into the axle side housing. The insulation was going really smooth, but at this point, I've ran into my first major problem. 
the hole on the lower control arm wasn't matching up to the axle side housing slot. The slot and the hole were way off and out of position. So I had to come up with a solution to get that to be moved over so I can center up that bolt and get that bolt mounted to the axle. This is what I did. I used my winch and I tied it up to the axle with my soft shackle and I pulled the bottom of the axle this way out so I can feed up that bolt. Now I'm still off on the other side so I'm gonna go have to do the same thing as I did on the passenger side over on the driver's side. As you can see, I'm still tied up to the axle. I'm gonna go ahead and push this button and see if I can get this to move just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in and to move the bolt over this way. Install my washer. This is a cam washer, so we gotta line up the marks. So with everything lined up and ready to be torqued down, I'm going to go ahead and torque the lower control arm frame side bracket nut to 130 foot pounds. And then I'm going to torque the axle side axle bracket nut to 85 foot pounds, both passenger and driver side. So the next steps in the build process are to install the drop down transfer case lowering kit. Here I'm going to take my six ton bottle jack and a saddle adapter to support the weight of the transfer case and the rear drive shaft. Next I'm going to remove the transmission mount that bolts to the skid plate with a 13 millimeter socket and remove all four nuts. Then I'll remove the six bolts with a 19 millimeter wrench mounting the skid plate to the frame. Then with my floor jack lower the skid plate to the floor. Then begin to remove the transfer case mount. Since I'm already here, I figured I'll just replace the transfer case mount and service my transfer case all at the same time. So it's not going to be required to do any of this during the installation process, but I thought since I was here, I would show you that other things could be serviced and replaced along the way during the installation process of that 4-inch lift. I can't say it enough, but that bottle jack adapter really came in handy for this part of the build. If you're interested in one of these, I'll drop a link in the description box below. So once the fluid is drained from the transfer case, I'm going to add two cords and then install the transmission mount it's a new mount from rugged ridge and we're going to install the six bolts and the lowering spacers to the skid plate so to start installing the skid plate back to the frame i'm going to start with one side getting the three bolts in i'm not going to tighten them up at this time and then once those three bolts are in i'll move to the other side and get those three bolts in you may have to work the holes to get everything lined up but then once everything's lined up, all six bolts are in, we'll go ahead and tighten those bolts and we'll torque them to 75 to 80 foot pounds. Lower my jack and then torque down the transmission mount to skid plate, all four nuts with a 13 millimeter socket to 45 foot pounds. Okay guys, so we're having issues switching from all of the even numbers. So two, four and reverse. Um, so when you do the transfer case drop, another thing to consider is you have to uh, do some sanding right in this area of the tub, which is not that big of a deal. I'm, I mean, I've only taken off maybe about a quarter of an inch and it's shifting fine. The problem is, is that, you know, a lot of people don't like doing this because it's sanding away material from the tub. Anyways, I took a drill and a sanding tool like this you can buy these pretty cheap at AutoZone it comes in like a kit for five bucks but uh, nevertheless um, this is what I had to do temporarily to get my uh, shifter to be shifting smoothly and um, staying in gear while in a two foreign uh, reverse um, so you'll have to remove the end on your steering shift I mean on your shifter all the boots the console and I would pull out some carpet and then like I said with this stone here it sanded out pretty quick in this area so I'm just going to take some spray paint and cover the bare material that way we can prevent rust from happening down the road
So guys, one thing to consider also is underneath the tub, you're gonna have to install this drop down bracket for the four wheel drive. Um, it's for the shift linkage. When you lower the transmission, the linkage starts to point upwards. So we need to drop that back down so it's level with a 90. Um, this is a pretty easy setup. It's four bolts. You have to remove the carpet from the inside, remove these four bolts. Once those are removed, this piece just comes right off and then you bolt the new bracket to this piece and uh, you slip this whole piece on over the shaft and then bolt the four bolts back on. Just keep that in mind. This is something you'll have to install if you do the lowering drop down brackets. So I also have a video on how to set this all up. Um, it's in my one inch body lift install video. If you would like to watch that, go ahead and check out that video. All of this is gonna be in that video and how to set up. So uh, I'll drop the link below and check out this link here. So now we're done installing the leveling kit. I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the rear end and set the frame on stands and then remove both the rear wheels. So first I'm gonna take this plastic cover off. It's an OEM cover that covers up the bar mount. And I'm gonna take a breaker bar and a 55 socket and break that bolt loose. Um, it was pretty difficult to get in there with a ratchet because of the gas tank and the short clearance between the gas tank and the mount of the bolt. But I was able to get it in there with an adapter to a hex head and that bolt was then removed. With the track bar disconnected, you can now move the axle like this. I'm going to go ahead and get my channel locks and remove that bump stop and the spring all at once. You may have to push down on the drum or the axle to get that spring out of the perch. There's no retainer bolts necessary to remove to remove the spring. So now that the springs are out, we're going to go ahead and install the new track bar mount. Just keep in mind, you'll have to drill a half inch hole with a drill bit. Once it's bolted up, go ahead and drill the hole and then reassemble your track bar. So the bolt hole we just drilled to secure the mount, you wanna make sure that's tight. All other hardware will come back and torque it later. So the next steps are to install the bump stops like we did earlier in the video. And then we're gonna compress these springs as much as possible and go ahead and install the springs to the axle and frame. So just a helpful tip, you're gonna to wanna to compress those as much as you can to get the springs in there. You don't really wanna fight the insulation of the new springs. But just keep in mind that you're going to have to back out those spring compression tools by hand. So once the bump stop springs and track bar are installed, we're going to go ahead and jack up the rear differential and get ready to install the lower control arms. So just like the front, we're going to do the rear lower control arms. We're going to remove the bolt with a 22 millimeter socket on the frame end of that lower control arm. And then the same tools to remove the bolts at the axle end of that lower control arm. So one at a time, I'm going to install the passenger and driver's side lower control arms with the label out. Just take a note that the label is on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and install the hardware at the frame and at the lower axle housing. I'm not going to torque these bolts just yet. We'll come back later and revisit to torque them. So now that the lower control arms are installed, I'm going to go ahead and set up all the hardware for the lower links with some lithium grease. I'm going to lubricate all of these spacers and get everything prepped up on the bench and we'll take them to the Jeep and go ahead and install them. I'm also going to add some grease to the bolts themselves where the shoulder slips through the spacers. So you're going to locate your upper and lower bolts for your sway bar link. And we're going to go ahead and torque both of these at 40 foot pounds. So now that the end links are installed and torqued, we're going to go ahead and put the wheels back on, remove the jack stands and remove the floor jack. So guys, at this point of the install, you're going to want to install your shocks. Um, check out that video link below on how to remove and install all four shocks on your Jeep. And uh, after that, we'll move to the next step. Once the Jeep is on the ground, we're gonna revisit the lower control arm bolts. I'm gonna torque both the frame mount and axle side of the lower control arm, both to 103 foot pounds. 
Now with the lower control arms torqued, I'm going to take my torque wrench and torque the frame end of that track bar to 74 foot pounds. And on the axle side, we're going to revisit those two bolts, the mount to the axle at 75 foot pounds and the track bar to the new mount we installed at 75 foot pounds. Since I was here, I'm going to torque all my lug nuts to my wheels at 95 foot pounds. So you're going to want to take your Jeep to a place like this. This is my local off-road park and we're going to check the clearances between the brake line. That's the first thing I'm going to check and everything looks good. This is somewhat fully extended. How I know that is because I still have some clearance on this side with the bump stop. So I have a little bit more room there and the wheel clearance on the fender. So um my brake line it feels loose it doesn't feel tight so that's going to be a good uh check you want to do there also you can notice that my sway bar hand link is still connected on this side whereas this side it's disconnected so you're going to make sure you're disconnect at least one side of your sway bar link so guys, just keep in mind that now with the four inch suspension lift, you're gonna have to properly adjust your headlights and you're gonna want those headlight beams looking down at the ground. You don't wanna point those into oncoming traffic. So just keep in mind that uh, those are gonna need to be adjusted. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, helps out the channel, and we'll see you guys on the next video.